Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS. And in this episode, as you can see, we're starting already in Arcana Archives, and we're buying some scrolls directly into our new empty scroll case. And the scrolls we're getting are of two types. Um, as you will see in a moment, there's going to be some lower level spells that both Sanashira and Imoen still need to uh, fill in the last gaps in their spellbooks. And we're going to do a scribing session in a moment, so finally they're going to be able to complete their spell arsenals and basically have every spell that the game allows them to have. And uh, the second type of scroll we're getting are spells that are just useful to keep in that form and use whenever we need them. And uh, basically, as you can see, I spared no expense when it comes to buying those scrolls, but uh, I've basically limited myself to sp spells of levels from 1 to 6, generally, uh, with some exceptions, as you, as you can see here. But when it comes to spells of uh, level 7, 8, and 9, we're going to have to use <laughs> the skills of Kirinai to obtain them at a much lower price of 0, <laughs> because uh, we wouldn't be able to afford them. And um, uh, you know, we're not really going to get much more gold for a while yet, uh, because uh, that merchant I, I mentioned uh, before, that has some really good prices for us when we're selling goods, we're not going to be able to unlock him for uh, a while yet. So, anyway, I'm just going to scroll through these uh, a little bit so you can see what scrolls we're getting. These ones are, you know, some stuff that we want to have in, in scroll form, and uh, same with, you know, spell immunities, breaches, and whatnot, but... Um, as we go um, further down the, the spell levels, you will see some like Power Word Sleep that Imoen still needs, for example, or Imoen actually doesn't have Fine Familiar, or none of our mages, or neither of them have a Reflected Image, for example. So, yeah, we're going to buy them here. And um, now we're going to engage in some uh, criminal activity, <laughs> I guess. And... Um, we're going to obtain the rest of our scrolls, and I'm also going to de-equip this uh, Elven Chain because it uh, reduces Kirinai's pickpocketing skill. And we're going to go with our usual combo of five potions of uh, Master Thievery and one potion of Perception. Oh, yeah. We can just keep drinking them from here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to steal the high-level scrolls, we're going to steal the Robe of the Good Archmagi for... Uh, Imoen, maybe some potions, and uh, then there is going to be a time to do that scribing session finally, and uh, teach our mages some of those uh, remaining spells that they still still need to learn. All right, now we are ready. I am going to steal all of these green scrolls as well. We actually have tons of them in uh, Jahira's scroll case, but, well, I'm not going to go with the protection from undead. But anyway, they are nice to have regardless. When it comes to these, I think I just, you know, from these lower uh, spell levels, I basically bought everything I wanted, but uh, actually I see that I have forgotten about True Sight, for example. Let's get that. Um, Now, when it comes to yeah, level 7, we need some ruby rays. Actually, let's uh, give that new scroll case to Kirinai, and let's just quickly put some stuff in there. I'm going to uh, sort these scrolls better in between recordings. Or actually, perhaps I'm going to do a little break in this episode, actually, to sort them better and prepare that scribing session so as to uh, not waste too much time of the episode, because of course, as always, we have a lot to do, we have a lot to accomplish. And the spell sequencers, of course, we're going to need. Maybe even that project image. Let's just kind of go in order to stack these scrolls, because he has two copies of everything. I'm actually going to get some mass invisibility as well. Now from level 7, oh yeah, we still need, oh yes, we still need some, <laughs> some stuff, oh yes. And I'm going to do all of this, like get all of his scrolls in, in one big uh, session. You can meet him uh, later in the game, but let's just kind of do it once and uh, be done with it. So that we don't have to engage in that kind of thing. 
when it comes to Lazarus, at least, uh, anymore. But actually, I think our uh, activities of uh, stealing merchandise from from merchants are about to end. Either with this one, or perhaps we'll do one more, and I think that's going to be it. We're going to need some limited wish scrolls as well. All right, let's let's stash them. Oh, that's already full. So we're going to have to stash them with a little bit more uh, thought behind that. Alright, and we're not even there yet when it comes to the really juicy spells. You know, when it comes to level 7, we're done. Now, I am going to get these horrid buildings. Let's just be done with uh, his stuff. Once and for all, like I said. Spell triggers we need, of course. Uh, I think we're kind of done with level 8, although we need to use protection from energy. And yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to forego stealing the uh, symbol spells. And now it's time for for the big boys, <laughs> for some of those juicy, juicy level 9 spells. That's what we really need to steal. We don't even have to look that carefully when it comes to what spells exactly we're stealing, we want them all. <laughs> I'm even going to take one Meteor Swarm, I guess, to teach uh, Seneshir and that spell. Oh, I'm not going to take Energy Drain, I guess. Actually, let me just check. Seneshir has that spell, but okay, Imoen doesn't. We need to steal one Energy Drain. That's what uh, rock bottom looks like. <laughs> or actually, buying energy drain would would be worse. At least we're stealing it, you know. At least we're not paying any money for it. <laughs> he only has one wish, I think, though. Yeah, kind of an exception from his uh, rule of two. <laughs> so to speak, when it comes to his spells. Alright, now, now we have this to to take care of. Now these Black, of, uh, black Blade of Disaster, black, black Blades of Disaster, I guess I should say, are going to go to Kirinai Scroll Case, and um, yeah, I think before we do the scribing session, I am going to do a little break and sort these scrolls a little better, because there are some scrolls like Mirror Images or Stone Skins, for example, that are going to go into Kirinai's Scroll Case, because those are going to be... Um, those are going to be... Uh, some spells that... I'm just going to go to Seneshira, she's going to learn that. Yeah, but those are going to be some spells that uh, she is going to use in Throne of Ball. Alright, and probably our final look at this uh, stealing menu, when it comes to Lazarus, at least. Yeah, just for learning purposes, we need to get some of these level 9 spells. Might even get these freedoms just to learn them. Although I think Seneshira 
probably knows that one already, but I am going to take both. Word kill. <laughs> In gate we have one scroll actually that we have obtained from Soldan SLR. Alright, and now we are done with scrolls, I think. If if I ever like forgot anything, as I said, Lazarus is going to chill in Saradush for now and then he's uh, even uh, available uh, later in the game. So he is he is going to be there whenever we need his services. Yeah, potions of master thievery. I don't think I we even need to get any of that because uh, we're going to have enough for another scribing session if we ever need that. Yeah, we have more than enough. All right. So I think now I'm going to cut the recording and uh, sort the scrolls a little bit better between scroll cases and kind of prepare the scribing sessions already, not to waste any more time. So see you in a moment. All right, and we're back. And actually, before we do anything else, let's just quickly steal this last remaining gate scroll. Maybe we'll use it from a scroll at some point to showcase some more demonic action. And uh, now we're not going to have any problem stashing it because I have uh, reworked our inventory a little bit. I gave these new containers to Saravok and placed uh, quite a few of our wands in this new bag of holding for now. I'm going to think more closely about which ones of those uh, wands I want to sell at a later point. But of course right now the most important thing is that uh, we have these scribing sessions prepared, especially on Imo, and just look at all of these spells that she needs to learn. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's let's get to it. Let's learn some spells, shall we? This is how you become a knowledgeable mage, man. <laughs> just chug some potions of genius and and uh, mass scribe some scrolls into your spellbook. So yeah, of course we have some level 8, level 9 spells that uh, neither of our mage ladies had and some lower level stuff, some essential uh, protection spells, for example, like protection from fire, protection from cold, and uh, Senashira actually didn't have protection from acid, and now she's going to have that. Alright, so we are done uh, here. Here we have our the spot for our familiar. And actually, I am going to take him into my backpack, because if uh, he gets blasted by one of these catapult projectiles on our way back to the tanker tree, uh, he actually might die, as a, he is injured, and we don't want that. And also, since we're on the topic of the familiar, uh, of course, in uh, every chapter he has a different piece of advice for us, so let's actually check this out, or what he says here. Yeah, he just says, you must survive, my lady. Your heritage places you in great danger. Of course, you know, now that we know that uh, ball spawn are being slaughtered left and right, of course, our top priority is uh, not to join them in the abyss. And uh, also, since he is injured, we might explore uh, this option here when we ask how he's doing. And he actually is going to uh, inform us that uh, he's not doing that great being injured. But uh, yeah, I'm going to temporarily uh, get him back. All right, and now we can get back to our uh, scribing sessions. Or session. Actually, I should be doing it the, uh, differently when it comes to picking up these uh, scrolls. Let's just have M.O.N. do it like that. It's going to be quicker. Now she had a lot of gaps. Because this is really her uh, her first like true big uh, scribing session, and of course, as you can see, we're getting a lot of experience from this, and we're going to get some levels on some of our characters, and that's all great. Because of course, now we have our true final final party, and uh, we want all the experience that we can get for all of them, especially since we have Imoen and, and especially Saravok that really need to catch up on experience. Imoen, of course, because she joined so late in Shadows of Am, she always was kind of two levels behind, really, and uh, so is Saravok. So, uh, yeah, now we are now we are ready. We can distribute some of these potions a little bit better. All right, and yes. now our next order of business is to go back to the inn. All right, no catapult incidents. <laughs> And um, I have already prepared some some different spells on Senashira and on Imoen, but now that she has learned a spell trigger, she of course needs to memorize that. We're going to use that, and uh, also has a level 9 spell 
available. Maybe let's get that Meteor Shower. It's kind of one of the least impressive level 9 spells, so maybe we're going to get a nice situation somewhere to use it and uh, present it. Also, Kirinai has had a level up, so let's level her up, and she also gets a proficiency point which I think I'm going to continue uh, putting into long swords. I think we might have a use for a certain long sword that we're going to get uh, later. So, um, but that, that might be her last proficiency point. I might also want to put a uh, second one into quarter staves so she can have specializations in, uh, in that type of weapon and uh, have that half of an attack uh, per round more. And uh, yeah, we have some some skills for her so we can just max out her skills. We could put some thieving skills um, in like locks and traps because right now she is not at max using that uh, armor that she's using but that really you know is, that's just not worth the the struggle of thinking about it really. <laughs> and now I think we need a uh, set time trap skill on her. So she's going to have a spike trap and a uh, time stop trap basically. And uh, yeah, we are ready. Let me just double check if we have the level two. Yes, we have memorized horror for a certain purpose. Also, now we can release our familiar so that it can rest with us. And also, one thing that I forgot in the previous episode was to loot this container. We have disarmed the, the, the trap here and uh, opened the lock, but I forgot to actually loot it. And there's a nice pierce shield scroll there. All right, and now we can get ourselves some rest. I think we also might get some conversations coming up soon, now that some time has passed. But uh, anyway, let's actually give a chance, because I think Emoen might have something to say. I... I've been having some nightmares. Really strange ones, like sailing on rivers of blood. So real. You... You used to dream a lot, right before Gorion died. Was it... was it like that? Well, and after Gorion died, all the way throughout Baldur's Gate 1, of course, this is a reference to the same thing. Emoen is basically going through that kind of ball spawn development, it seems. So we're going to uh, comfort her. I don't know how much longer I can go on like this. The images, they keep coming to my mind when I sleep, no matter how hard I try to block them out. And the whispering is driving me mad. And I've started to develop powers. Powers that reach down into the taint within me and have nothing to do with my magic. Minor spells, like what you developed after you left Candlekeep. Healing, curing poison, things like that. But that means... that means I'm following the same path as you. That means that... that things could get worse. It means that I could become the Slayer. And, um, yeah, of course we can help each other, we're going to help Emoen through that. I hope you're right. The more I discover about this taint, the more I don't want it. I don't know how you ever dealt with it. So, of course, uh, throughout what she uh, has went through in Shadows of Amn, especially, you know, Irenicus, and by showing her all of the, that darkness and that evil, um, you know, awakened, I guess, that, that kind of ball spawn development in her. And uh, she was always kind of, you know, she, she, as it was said, her cheerful and bright spirit kind of blocked out, pushed out that taint to like the, the bottom corners of her soul or whatever. And she never really experienced any of that uh, ball spawn uh, related stuff. So, of course, throughout Baldur's Gate 1 and a lot of Baldur's Gate 2, we didn't even know that she was one of the children of Ball as well. But now, I guess, uh, because of what she went through and because of what Irenic has done to her, uh, you know, now she is starting to experience all of that, although later than most ball spawn, I guess. And yeah, now we got some experience. She also now progressed to 19 dexterity, which means that her ranged taco is uh, better by one. And uh, she does indeed have some minor powers, basically like the, the first powers that we unlocked in Baldur's Gate 1. Cure uh, uh, light wounds and uh, minor... Uh, Larlock's minor drain. Minor <laughs> drain. Uh, anyway. So yeah, uh, now we are after our first conversation with Emoen. It's a pretty cool little touch that she, you know, started developing that uh, powers. And uh, yeah, we have memorized horror to scare V Kang, and uh, we are going to be able to awaken uh, his uh, ball spawn related power of just uh, teleporting spontaneously into a different place in the world. 
What? It's working. I'm starting to feel fear. That means I'll teleport away. Oh, thank you, thank you. And it seems like he successfully teleports away, not like, um, you know, despite of these uh, magical barriers, I guess, that were placed around Saradouche. Perhaps because this isn't a magical spell, but kind of his ball spawn ability. And we get, you know, another minor experience reward here. And, uh, yeah, now we have a... Uh... So, I get remain at your side. I am surprised. But from your constant wary glances, it seems that you do not trust my presence. Yet. Alright, so the first conversation with Saravok as well. And you're surprised by that? You have grown in power, so I do not expect you to fear me as you once may have. But I do expect the lack of trust, the suspicion that I might betray you. If I were you, I would feel so. It eats away at me, then, as to why you would agree to take me with you and not for some sort of compliance from me through an oath. Uh, or some form of compliance from me through an oath. I told you that oaths had real power in our father's realm. And yeah, of course, this first conversation uh, references the fact uh, that we did not require him to swear an oath or undergo a gius. And uh, of course, it would be different if we it would have been different if we had uh, made him swear an oath to us and uh, because this is this uh, version of the conversation where he didn't take the oath we actually have uh, two chances to increase that uh, alignment change variable that I mentioned when we uh, met him for the first time of course uh, you know through these conversations we can convince him of the errors of his uh, past ways from his previous life and uh, here already uh, if we say this one that uh, you know he, he can always die again if he screws up or uh, this one that I'm going to choose uh, those conversation options already increase uh, that alignment changed uh, the first time and then we're going to have another uh, opportunity to to increase it further by one more point uh, in a second so I'm going to say I don't believe in enslaving the wills of others your destiny is your own business so you allow me to make my own destiny by your side trusting I will not betray you why your vengeance aside, why would I not do so if I thought I could gain advantage? And here again, we, we can you know increase that um, variable by by the, that second chance line, for example. But I'm going to use this. You paid for what you did. You're a new man, free to make new mistakes if you wish. And interesting view, Senashira. Perhaps it shall be your downfall. I shall have to think on it. So yeah, we have given him some food for thought. And uh, yeah, I was about to say that now, uh, at least what I wanted to do in this episode is uh, conduct another crime investigation. We have uh, definitely some stuff to do still in Saradouche. So here are the militia barracks. Uh, this is kind of like a different faction of defenders of Saradouche from Gromnir's personal guard. Uh, these are, are, you know, the normal soldiers and, and the militia that uh, fights in defense of Saradouche. And uh, I guess they are spread too thin to really protect the the populace of Saradush from the harassment from uh, Gromnir's soldier, and perhaps they don't want to really have such infighting. Uh, but anyway, here we have a scene with uh, Captain Samand addressing Countess Santel. I know this is difficult for you, but you have to make a positive identification. Yes, he is the one, Matteo. He is the traitor. And he responds with, No, the Countess must be mad with grief. There must be some mistake. You are certain, Countess? There is no mistake? I am certain. Before my beloved son, Ardic disappeared, he told me he had witnessed Matteo opening the gate. And there's another person here, Kaiser Jerry. There. Surely you now see, my overzealous Captain Samand, that your egregious accusations have needlessly vilified my impeccable character. And I love this guy, <laughs> this verbally verbose charlatan. <laughs> he is great. Not only, you know, is he... Like, the way he talks is just funny, and, and they I feel like they constructed his lines really well when uh, writing him. Why are you doing this, Countess? I'm Ardic's friend. Your son and I grew up together. Captain, I stringently demand you incarcerate this heinous felon immediately. You make no demands of me, Kaiser Jerry. I fulfill my duties as I see fit. Men, take Matteo away, and escort the Countess to her quarters. Yes, please, take me away from this place. Well, Captain, am I free to go now? Is this travesty of justice, this witch hunt, this this fiasco finally at an end? <laughs> so he is free to go. Get out of my sight. I'm in no mood to see your unscrupulous face right now. 
I suppose such abuse is the best approximation of an apology I can expect from an uncouth cretin such as yourself, Captain Samound. <laughs> so as we can, could uh, witness from the situation, all is not right here in Saradouche. It seems like perhaps Matteo may have been falsely accused. Yeah, just what our town needs. More ball spawn. But anyway, we can ask him some questions. And before we ask about what happened, we can uh, have some inquiries when it comes to uh, different uh, people in Saradouche, like Gromnir. Oh yeah, and he says that as a ruler, Gromnir is even more of a tyrant than Count Santel. So we're going to get a little bit more of an idea even uh, in a second <clears throat> that Count Santel wasn't really a benevolent, benevolent ruler that... Uh, uh, you know, was thrown off his uh, his leadership seat here by uh, Gromnir. Uh, basically, when that happened, I guess the the people cheered. I, I guess at first, before realizing what kind of tyrant Gromnir is. And he talks about the militia, and then Melisande that she brought all of those ball spawn here, and uh, she. Uh, he is not going to have any clues for us when it comes to entering uh, Gromnir's castle. And uh, he also mentions the tank tankard tree and the temple of Joaquin. Anyway, let's uh, ask about uh, what was going on in that conversation we had just witnessed. A most unpleasant matter. A few days ago, someone opened a secret gate into the town. Saradouche could have easily been overrun. We just discovered the traitor was a young man named Matteo. But you don't sound convinced. There's no doubt in my mind that someone betrayed us. The enemy came through a small sewer outlet that was protected by both a locked iron grate and several powerful magical wards. There is no way to open that entrance from the outside, but Matteo is a faithful soldier, not the type of man to betray Sardouche. An alarm was raised, and my soldiers arrived only a few moments after the gate was opened. We found three people in the area, Matteo, Ardic Santel, and the merchant Kaiser Jerry. When we began our investigations, I strongly suspected Kaiser. He's a greedy, self-serving weasel who would sell his own mother if the price was right. So why did you arrest Matteo? We didn't get a chance to complete our investigations. Ardic, the son of the Countess Santel, disappeared. He was our primary witness. And we can ask if perhaps Ardic is the culprit. No, not Ardic. Someone who didn't know better might think Ardic was taking revenge for Gromnir's banishment of his father, but the Count was nothing but a cruel, violent bastard. Gromnir did Ardic and the Count as a favor, and Ardic bears no ill will towards the town. Yeah, Ardic was taking his regular shift manning the battlements. He wouldn't be the first taken by an enemy arrow or some foul spell. Or maybe Matteo murdered him. Our attention was focused on the vile Kaiser Jerry, but we had no proof. Then the Countess told us that Ardic, her son, had implicated Matteo before he disappeared. How do you know the Countess is telling the truth? If you, know, if you knew the Countess, you would know her word is beyond reproach, and she has nothing to gain from a lie. Matteo was Ardic's closest friend. Accusing him was very traumatic for her. Still, I have to admit, this does not sit well in my gullet. I was so sure Kaiser Jerry was the culprit. To discover it was one of my own men, I'm shocked. But Matteo will not be executed, not while we are under siege. The defense of Saradouche is my first concern. But if I had more time, I would investigate further. I just want to find the truth. You want the truth? You can't handle the truth! <laughs> nice little uh, reference <clears throat> uh, to the movie uh, A Few Good Men. I'm actually <laughs> going to use that <laughs> uh, conversation options. Uh, basically, most of them lead to this. But if we want to investigate further, he's not going to bar our way. So yeah, we will write this injustice. So he's going to open the door to the prison and uh, go away. And here we're going to be able to talk with Matteo. His guard is now going to open the door for us. There's nothing here, but um, there are... Before we speak to Matteo, before I forget, we can get some five good potions from that little container there. Right, we can use our new potion case, I guess, for some of these better potions. And yeah, here's Matteo. Are you here to further torment me? To heap more scorn upon my head? No, my name is Senashira. I think you've been framed. So yeah, he, he's just as shocked and confused as anyone else as to why the the trustworthy Countess would like falsely implicate him. 
and uh, he's going to confirm that you know uh, Ardik and his mother uh, you know aren't seeking revenge on Gromnir I guess for banishing the count yeah if Ardik or his mother felt anything when Gromnir banished the count it was only relief he was a brutal savage man they are better off without him yeah so apparently you know we could even see from what the countess was saying that uh, she wasn't very convincing in her uh, in her um, testimony I guess and uh, she was acting kind of distraught yes. acting uh, pretty strangely and now we're going to be able to uh, meet her at her home and uh, ask her some questions and basically from this point on uh, if you know the quest and you know what to do, wh where to go, we could go directly where we need to go and do what we need to do to complete this quest. But, you know, as it's usually the case in, in this, you know, completionist playthrough, I am going to go through this whole quest line as you're kind of, you know, quote unquote supposed to. We're going to conduct a proper investigation and uh, explore our options here in this situation. What is it? Please, my lady, I have spoken with Matteo. Oh, Matteo. Forgive me, I had no choice. I could not bear to lose my son. So what's this all about? I was forced to do this. By Kaiser Jerry. He has kidnapped my boy, Ardic. He said if I accused Matteo, he would return my son to me. But now he has gone back on his word. He says he will keep my son to guarantee my silence. I fear the worst. That Kaiser has no intention of ever returning my son. Such treachery. <laughs> and she's going to be against uh, us acting against Kaiser. Kaiser must not be harmed, I beg you. He is the only one who knows where my son is. Letting Kaiser get away with this is not going to get your son back, Countess. I... I don't know what to do. I wish Matteo to be free. I wish Kaiser to be punished. But most of all, I just wish my son was safe by my side. I have little to reward you with, but perhaps... Perhaps you could go to Kaiser's home and speak with him. Maybe somehow you can convince him to release my son. Alright, so of course we have to go to his home, and uh, the door here are is normally locked but now that we have witnessed that scene at the militia's uh, quarters now he's it's going to be open and he's going to be home and we're going to have a great conversation with uh, Kaiser Jabroni here interlopers in my abode perhaps you have mistaken this edifice for an establishment of commerce I assure you you are mistaken if you vacate these premises forthwith, I shall exonerate you for the transgression of your intrusion. <laughs> of course, we want to talk with him. I am at a distinct disadvantage. You have the privilege of knowing my appellation, yet your own moniker remains something of an enigma. <laughs> Why do you use so many big words? Are you trying to make me feel stupid? My utilization of complex locution is more a refl reflection of my own superincumbent mental acuity than an aspersion of your circumscribed lexicon. <laughs> And you can see see that he's just a guy that, you know, memorized a couple of synonyms to try to appear smart. But anyway, maybe your grandiose vocabulary is a pathetic compensation for an insufficiency in the nether regions of your anatomy. <laughs> he's going to have no retort to that. Anyway, I would like to pose several enquiries about the case of Matteo. A sorrowing circumstance, to be sure. Who could have conjectured that Matteo was a traitor? Your meandering is unnecessary. Countess Santel already related to me the development of recent events and the fact that you hold Ardic captive. So the Countess has violated her covenant of discretion. Before you vault to spurious conclusions, however, I suggest you hear my exegesis of the extenuating circumstances, child of Baal. Ah, your visage registers surprise. Did you presume I did not know both your identity and ancestry long before you stumbled into my dwelling? I present you with an offer, Ballspawn. I admit my culpability in Ardic's abduction, yet this does not implicate me in the betrayal of Saradouche. Ardic did indeed see me near the gates, but I was not the guilty party. Do you surmise I will consider your exposition as truthful? You are ignorant of the particulars, yet already you convict me. You are as prejudiced against me as Captain Samand. Agreed. Even though your veracity is suspect, I will reserve my judgment for the moment and allow you the opportunity to dispel the misconceptions pertaining to your predicament. The real traitor is a wizard named Erard. He poses as a stalwart defender of Saradouche, yet in truth he is a seditious prevaricator. The mind of that mage is convoluted beyond comprehension. If this is the genuine state of affairs, why did you not present this elucidation to Captain Samand? No one would believe my account, not without substantial proof. 
Captain Samand is driven by a perverse desire to ruin me, and he was willing to convict me based on Arctic's speculative testimony. I was compelled to secure my own liberty so that I could pursue my investigations against the sorcerer and uncover the evidence that will implicate the renegade mage. But why did you falsely accuse Matteo? I could not let Erard know uh, anyone suspects his involvement, or the wizard would destroy the evidence I need to procure, and the only other people in the vicinity were Arctic and Matteo. I had to kidnap Arctic, then use him to coerce his mother to point the finger of blame at Matteo. Only in this way could I keep myself from prison without all alerting Erard of my intent to expose him. An improbable narrative. How can I stand assured that your relation is in accordance with the facts? Ah, the eternal curse of the successful merchant. People see my affluence and are instantly predisposed to doubt me. I have no proof to offer at this time, but I do hold one card yet. If any harm befalls me, I guarantee Ardic will never be found alive. If you desire to aid the Countess, you will help me exonerate myself. I infer you want me to produce unequivocal confirmation of Erard's involvement in the crime? Alas, such an elementary resolution is not possible. While Erard lives, he is able to obfuscate tr investigation into his own actions. Only his demise will allow me to clear my own name. My mission would therefore entail putting an end to Erard's existence. Regrettably, yes. I could not attempt such an endeavor myself, but you might prevail, prevail where I would falter. If not for me, consider how this will benefit Arctic, the Countess, and even Saradush itself. Do we have a full understanding of the situation? May I rely on your absolute cooperation in this matter? What is to restrict me from recounting our verbal exchange to Captain Samand? Without some proof, no one would believe your tale, and it would be extremely detrimental to the health of Arctic. What is then to constrain me from terminating your ability to draw breath at this moment in time? You might make the attempt, but my death will not bring gain to anyone involved. I suggest you save your violent impulses for other individuals. Erard comes readily to mind. Return only once your task is done. Until then, we have nothing further to discuss. <laughs> All right, so, so uh, after that, uh, we may uh, go back to... Uh, Speaking uh, in uh, more simpler terms, I guess, I'm just going to leave my party uh, here under the roof of uh, of uh, Countess uh, Santel's building, because uh, there is surely going to be a catapult projectile approaching us very soon. I have things to do. Why not be sitting on me duffer talking to you? <laughs> and here's Erard, kind of uh, leading the, the defense force of Saradush here, I guess. But yeah, we are going to be able to uh, convince him to, to listen to us. And we can just uh, basically relate uh, Kaiser Jerry's scheme to him. Because, of course, we suspect him to be a conniving liar and uh, be the real... Uh, betrayer of Saradush. The word of a ball spawn counts for little here in Saradush, but for the safety of the city, I must investigate the truth of your accusations. We must find Arctic. Brilliant. Glad you came up with that idea. <laughs> yeah, and he's going to use some divination magic to uncover where Arctic is being held. My spell is complete. Ardic yet lives, as you have claimed. But this is most strange. All the signs point to the home of Kaiser Jerry. <gasps> Could it be that he has deceived us? <laughs> I suggest you investigate Kaiser's home more thoroughly. It is there you shall find the son of the Countess. And of course, he's not going to come with us. Alright, now we can... Reassemble our party here and confront Kaiser once again. But, as you can see, he is nowhere to be found. But we can go into his basement and investigate further. And, of course, like I said, you know, you can uh, go into his basement um, after witnessing that exchange with Captain Samand, Matteo, the Countess, and him, and kind of just uncover the truth. But I wanted, of course, to go through the whole investigation process. Here we're going to use our newly learned spell trigger on uh, Imwen to just present a different type of one with a triple sunfire that we're going to use, well, either in this encounter... I, I think... Actually, 
I think we're going to use it later. For now, perhaps we're going to use... Uh... Oh, we'll see. Anyway, we need a little pre-buffing here. We're going to use a, a little bit of... Uh... Chaotic commands just on Senashira so that uh, we don't face any any nasty consequences of spells because there is going to be a mage and we also need to protect our characters here from being uh, backstabbed because there are going to be some nasty backstabs and for that reason we're going to give Ilbratha to Saravok and he's going to get some mirror images for himself and we're going to have some uh, armors of faith on uh, Jahira and Anaman and Jahira also can get uh, Iron Skins. So I think with these protections, I think also Kirinai is going to go into stealth. So in, with these protections, I think Anaman is going to be the primary target for some backstabs, which is okay. He has a lot of uh, physical damage mitigation, and he has a decent health pool, so he should be able to withstand a backstab no problem. Alright, so here's Kaiser Jerry again. Senashira, for endeavoring to divulge my machinations, I shall repay you with the gruesome demise of both Arctic and yourself. And now, Kaiser Jerry is actually a level 24 assassin, who is uh, kind of special in the game, because he is... Uh, normally assassins, of course, can backstab uh, up to times 7 damage, but he is actually, in the game files, uh, modified... Uh, so that he actually can backstab for times 9 damage. In the combat log, it's going to t to say, like, septuple damage, uh, because there is no other, uh, you know, message, I guess, available in the combat log, but he actually can backstab for times 9 of his damage. So that's why we have protected ourselves quite thoroughly when it comes to uh, physical protections. And yeah, he's going to be very likely, of course, to backstab. These fighters are level 20. They might have uh, access to some high-level abilities, and actually, on that note, they might have Warcry, so let's just protect ourselves against fear here. Alright, and let's just get through to them. Alright, and we're going to uh, repay him with the same thing. I think uh, he fumbled yeah, his, his backstab, he missed. And we're going to backstab him in return with Kirinai. Boom! Oh, and that was actually her offhand attack now. So that's why we got the dam the message that the backstab seems to have failed, because that was her uh, Scarlet Ninjato attack. I should have just made sure to de-equip it to make sure that uh, she would attack with her Scarlet Ninjato. Anyway, he also used the Assassin ability Poison Weapon, so we really want to take care of him first. Before he can poison us. Alright, cool. Alright, uh, another thief that they also have. This one is a level 20 assassin, and this one can just backstab for... Uh, I think it's times 6. I think assassins at level 21 get times 7 backstab. But he also has a uh, poison weapon at his disposal. So someone might get poisoned here. Of course, this is not going to be a big problem for us, because we have plenty of ways to... Uh... Alright, he actually critically missed. We also uncovered this trap, we're going to speak about it in a second. And there was a message that uh, there's a switch hidden behind it. We can uh, disarm that, and there's also another one. We can flick these switches. In our case uh, here with Kaiser Jerry, by the way, I forgot to kind of explain the different uh, outcomes that, that can happen over the course of this quest. Uh, basically, when it comes to Kaiser Jerry, of course, we can listen to, to his side of the story and kill Erard, and after we come back, he is going to reveal where Ardic is, and we would be able to go and, and rescue him and then report back to the Countess. That's kind of, you know, not the, the best outcome, of course, uh, killing an innocent like Erard uh, to rescue Ardic, but at least, you know, he gets rescued. And also, since we are good aligned, we did not even get that offer, but if you uh, pursue a slightly different... Uh, conversation option. In our case, Kaiser would just like dismiss that whole option completely because we are good aligned. But if we were evil aligned, he would actually offer us to kill the Countess for him. And uh, that is uh, 
the, the third outcome where you can go to, to the Countess's estate and kill her and her guards and then report back to Kaiser. But uh, anyway, uh, since we have proceeded with the full course of the investigation, he was of course in the basement here and we had this whole fight with him and the guys and there's actually a mage back there that we still have uh, yet to defeat. But anyway, this passage here is already open. But if we just had investigated his basement um, without conducting that whole investigation, this would have been a secret passage that w would be locked. And um, I think it's supposed to be unlocked by untrapping these two and flicking these two switches. But it's either the enhanced edition, I don't remember from the classic uh, version if that's the case. It's been so long that I have... Um, uh, you know, basically not done this this like whole um, investigation in the classic version. So perhaps it's the enhanced edition that fumbled something. But even if you disarm these two uh, switches, this doesn't open, and you have to get the key from Kaiser Jerry that he has on his person. This one, the secret jail door key, which we of course don't need anymore because in our outcome, this passage is already opened. This might be perhaps the doing of SCS opening this up so that uh, we can have a, a, a harder fight with some with that thief also that starts behind the wall and he joined the fight but not the mage for some reason and there she is All right, let's let's see what she has here All right so she has spell immunity to divination and some simulacrums no spell immunity to abjuration and I think this is the perfect opportunity for us to use our triple remove magic spell sequencer in that case Especially since she is supposed to be a level 22 mage, so with us being level 20 and uh, unleashing triple remove magic, we have a decent chance of um, getting rid of her protections. So let's see if this is going to work. This actually did not work on her. We might actually cast a nice dispel magic from our level 27 Anaman, which uh, might be a little bit more successful. Let's get... Uh, there's a remove magic heading our way, but just from the simulacrum, so that was not effective. Uh, the simulacrum's levels are only 60% of the uh, caster's level. So, you know, they generally don't have access to the highest levels of spells, and uh, the remove magics are not going to be that effective. But now we had a remove magic coming from uh, the, the main mage herself. Alright, our dispel magic was successful. Their remove magics were successful on Senashira as well. But uh, not fully successful because Anaman's buffs, uh, Remove Fear and Chaotic Commands, actually stayed on her. But anyway, let's now quickly approach her and uh, just <laughs> get rid of her like that. Alright, he had a... she had a symbol. It's a symbol stun, so we might trigger that with uh, Senashira because she has those Chaotic Commands. She's not going to do anything uh, against her, and she even saved against it. Anyway, now let's talk to Arctic here. Yeah, he's going to recognize that uh, the traitor had died, and he says that he has a lot to do, of course, so he's going to vanish. And uh, I think we are very much over time in this episode, so we are going to loot the place, because we have some stuff to loot here and uh, upstairs, and basically just uh, get the the second part, I guess, of the conclusion to this quest, which is not very satisfying, but it is there when we talk to the Countess. Uh, in the next episode. So for now, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.